So today's lesson is basically about how to why I dimension the way I do, or why you're going to dimension the way you do, and how to do it. And also just a few other little tips and tricks to get you along on your assignment. So to start off with, some basic things. If I draw a box, okay, and you can notice that it's snapping into place, okay. If I want to grab, let's say, the center of it, you can see how there's a little triangle. If I go to the ends, there's endpoints, okay. And I can set up, those are called e-snaps. If I draw a circle, and I put that circle in the center, and I do a line again, I can automatically, you can see how all of a sudden now there, at 180 degrees, there's a quadrant snap, quadrant snap, quadrant, quadrant, or, okay, now if I go towards the center, I'll get the center snap. To get those, on e-snap down the bottom right-hand corner, I write mouse click, under settings, and then I can pick what I want. Depending on what you're doing, you should use these. So if you want to do something funky and try and find the point, you might want to find the midpoint of something, use it. If you might want to find something tangent to a circle, you use it. right? And you'll get used to using these things and find it's really handy. Again, you don't guess. right? You do it exact. So I'm just going to get rid of, uh, no, I'll use, I'll, keep, I'll turn quadrant off for now. Okay? So. That's kind of what e-snaps are. I believe I talked about ortho last day, where ortho is, I can only see how I can go any angle I want right now. If I go to ortho and I click it on, I can only go vertical or horizontal or vertical. I can't go in between. That's really handy. There are times where I don't want to snap. So that basically I turn ortho off, I turn snap off, and now I can go wherever I want, little tiny bits. If I turn snap on, now it jumps a set distance. Right? So be aware of that. Those are your friends to figure out how you want to do stuff. You can also just change your grid. Right? If I right mouse click and go settings on grid, maybe I don't want my grid to be half an inch. Maybe I want my grid to be an inch or 10 inches. And then I can just go snap, snap. And that's very handy if you wanted to put a bunch of circles one after the other at certain set distances. We're paying attention, right? Good. Okay. So that's that type of stuff. So I'm just going to delete this box and actually I'll delete everything. And I talked about doing this. If I go this way, I highlight everything. It selects everything. If I only go partially like this, it selects just the circle. If I go from the right and I go and just barely touch everything, it highlights it all. I think I did that last day. Okay. Just so you know the differences. So just going to draw something really quick here. Just go like this, like this, and like that. And I'm going to draw a circle, put a circle right here. Okay, dimensioning. You need to dimension things when people, you want somebody to build something. And you don't need to dimension all the things. You only need to dimension what's needed, right? So on an object, typically you dimension the major things. So for example, the outside overall size. Right? If there's a circle, you would dimension the diameter of the circle. If there's a radius, you dimension it a radius. And just I just remember this before I start, I'm just going to type in fillet and I'm going to put a radius of, I don't know, 0.5. Oops, a radius of 0.5. And I'm just going to hit this one here, hit it there. Oops. And there's my radius. And there's another one called chamfer. What's chamfer going to do? What is chamfer, though? It's a what? It's a 45 if you set it up for 45. So I'm just going to put chamfer. I'm going to put um, D for distance. The first one's going to be 0.5. Second one's going to be 0.5. And then I can hit this and go there and there. There's my chamfer. So there's my object to dimension. So to dimension things, one is I want to change layers. Because if I'm going to eventually use this on a CNC plasma cutter or the laser engraver, I don't want everything on the same layer. So if your prototype drawing is set up right, or your template, I'll have all my different layers here. So there's my dimension lines. I'm going to start with the major dimensions. So they're just linear. I can grab down here, go from there to there, and I pull it down. I can go over here and say, well, what's the major dimension here? Well, it is overall, it is a, a sorry, I'm going to hit a um, spacebar to bring back command from here 
to there, and that's my major dimension. Those are my height and width ones. After that, I start doing other things, right? So here, there's a chamfer. Now, do I want it as a 45 and tell the person it's a 45, or do I want to tell, actually measure that angle or measure that the length of that? So I could go dimension, go aligned, grab this one here, that there, and go like that, tell them exactly how long it is, or I could say, well, that is a 45, right? So I could go to uh, dimensions again, angle, grab that and that, and then flip around. There's my 45. Okay, or I could just measure it all out, and I could say, well, you know, the height, and go back to dimension, linear, from here to here. Whoops, sorry, made a mistake there. From there to there is one inch. And then I could measure from here to here as a set distance. And then they would have to figure that out. So there's different ways to do it depending on how easy you want them to actually be able to build it. Okay, And that's what you have to figure out. So to me on this one, I don't have to dimension everything. right? So for example, if I want to figure out how long something is, so from here to there, I could dimension this to there. And I could do that, but you can see how the pink line goes over top here. So I wouldn't do it there. I would go dimension, linear, go from there to there, come up. So there's that dimension. Then maybe I want the dimension from here to here. Okay, so I would go dimension, linear, and I'd pick from there to let's say there. And I go inside, and you notice that the dimension's actually getting, the, the shorter the dimension is, it's underneath the longer one. You wouldn't put that on the top. Okay, you don't try and cross dimensions if you can. Or, you, sorry, you don't cross dimensions if you can help it. Okay, and then I could also take this dimension, linear, right there, right there. Now, if I could do a little bit of math, could I actually figure out what all the rest of the dimensions are? Right? Pardon me? Not the circle, right? So let's just do the circles then. So dimension, one's a radius, this one. So I would bring this out and maybe I'll put it up here. And yes, they're crossing. And then the other one is a diameter. So I would grab the center of the circle and I could just put that up right there. Now, you, you try not to put stuff inside. Okay, everything's on the outside. It all depends. And sometimes there's so many different dimensions that you have to. Right? And yes, I guess, Brian, I could just take this, right? And I could move it down inside here and put it right there. Right? Does the same thing. Right? Now, could you figure out everything from what I've given you there? Yes. Probably, right? You could sit there and say, well, if this is four and a half here, that's two point two five. Well, from there to there is four and a half minus two point two five. You notice how there's all these zeros? Do you need them? No. So I could just highlight every one of these. Okay, right mouse click, and you come down here and precision and grab, well, I only need it to two decimal places. So there's my two decimal places. But that's basically how you're going to dimension. You try not to cross things. You make sure that you don't dimension everything if you can do a little bit of math. And then the last thing is, what units are these in? Are they? Are they? Are they in meters? You don't know. So here's the thing. Somebody asked me last day, what this bottom box down here is for? Put in the units. So in this case, I would just go to the text layer and, oops, hang on, let's just go to text and T and I'm going to try and put it here, but it's not going to fit because I have all these snaps on. See, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to put it here, but it won't. If I just turn snap off, Wow, no, all those are on. So if I turn eSnap on, now I can actually get it where I want. Right? And so the height, let's say it's going to be okay, 0.3. And I should be able to go text. No, hang on, sorry. Let me just type in text. Okay, wherever I'm going to go is going to be right there. And height of text, 0.3. Angle is going to be zero. And the text is going to be imperial. Right? 
and it goes in there. Now, if it doesn't fit, I change the text height, and I can do different things, right? So to change the text height, I can just grab it, right mouse click. You can go to properties. Sorry, you can't change it there. Pardon me? Yeah, you right mouse click, and you go to, uh-oh, I didn't practice this one. Edit text, there we go. No, that's giving me the text itself. Oh, crow, I should have practiced this one. I didn't do this one. Is it, I, could, I guess I could type scale, but you can sit there. And I thought you could do here, and general miscellaneous text height. Where's text height in here? Okay, forget my little demo on that one, because I don't know how to do it without practicing. Okay, so that's basically how you would dimension. So as you guys are doing these things, bear in mind, nothing's crossing, and I'm just, you're basically just copying my stuff, right, that I've done. But that's why I'm doing it that way. Down the road, when I ask you to do something, and you actually draft it out, and you will, I'll expect it done like this in Dimension properly, right? And you will have to do that for different projects. Now, next up, there's the second gasket you're going to do that a bunch of you will start today. And it's going to end up being a couple circles like this, right? And here's the easiest way to, to cheat, to make things work well. If I type in line, and then I type in tan, Okay, tan means tangent to. Now, I could pick anywhere along here. So let me say I'm going to pick here. Okay, now I'm going to go over to here, and I type in tan as well while I'm still in line. And let's say I pick over here. What does tangent mean? Somebody, what is tangent? Only one point is touching the circle. So if I click right there, is that touching only one point at each circle? No. no. So what do you think is going to automatically happen? It's going to sit there and move it to be that. Right? So if I touch right here, it'll automatically make it so it's tangent. And when you zoom in here, it is only touching one point. It would continue on off of here, right, if it was longer. But it's only touching that one point. Now, if I do the same thing on the bottom line, right, and I type in tan, Go and again, I'll go over there somewhere, and then tan again, and I'll go up right here. It automatically puts in the right spot. Now it's pretty simple. Trim, and I pick this. Sorry, I pick this line, this line. Right mouse click, pick the middle one out. There, I'm done. Okay, there it's 3D. Okay, so pick that one and that one. Sorry, so I hit a uh, uh, spacebar again and. Actually, I'm going to undo this and show you. You can do it this way, right? Trim. I should have done it all in one shot. Pick that one. Pick that one. Right mouse click. Pick that one. Whoops. Pick that one. And pick that one. Okay, and it's done. Right? But that's basically how you do the second gasket. Okay? So, those are my little tricks for today and things to do. I hope that actually helps you out. And basically, you are on your own.